Hey everybody, welcome back to GGRC, where we're trying to keep good games alive. I'm RC, and today we're checking out Tragedy of Prince Rupert. Now, as you can tell from the screen here, the game is very unique in its look. It's got this sort of uh, FMV thing going on with some, you know, I, I guess hand-drawn models here. You can tell that the, uh, the character in here uh, is in a hot air balloon, which you don't see too often in video games. It makes it pretty unique. Um, but for anybody who might remember the game Luft Rousers, this game is very much like that kind of game. It is a high score type of game. Um, basically what you're doing here, and we'll, we'll play a round of it, is you're flying around as this, uh, hot air balloon. Oop. And when you get hit, you have this circle. Once that circle encloses around you, you are gone. But if you go up into the air, this will help you to bring back some of your uh, health. Actually, it'll restore all of your health. So, this gets pretty wild. This this bullet hell shooting, uh, it's, it's actually dual stick. You can use the gamepad or the mouse and keyboard controls. I, uh, I've been using the gamepad. It feels a little bit more comfortable than the mouse and keyboard, or at least that's how I felt. I felt a bit more keyboard uh, comfortable with uh, using the gamepad instead of the keyboard and the mouse. There you go, I just biffed it right there. Hot Air Balloon really took it. They're still <laughs> taking out my body here. But as you can see there, I mean, you're going to run into all kinds of different enemies. You're going to have planes, you're going to have paragliders, uh, you're going to have these uh, different ships that come in different sizes, you're going to have airships. Um, and it's all in the name of getting high score. You can see that your high score is actually in the top left corner there. I'm only at, let's see, we're, we're going up, we're, we're hitting the 200s here. But the one thing I will say about this game is, man, it gets difficult. If you're going for... Oh, jeez. If you're going for high score and trying to beat other high scores, which there is a leaderboard, just so you know, um, it, it gets really tough. But I, I love the art style of this, where uh, Left Rousers had an art style that I really liked as well. This takes the whole idea and really turns it on its head. And not just with the illustration style here. Here, we'll, we'll do one more run here, and I'll, I'll get to the point that I'm making here. This game actually offers more in the way uh, than what you're seeing here. So you might be thinking, like, okay, big deal. This is a game, you know, where you're uh, playing as a hot air balloon, bullet hell, hell shooter. You know, you're shooting, trying to get a high score. You're probably thinking, you know, big deal. There's not really much to it. But there's actually a bit of meat to this game. We'll get into that in just a second here. Again, love these rocks, love the way this looks. Got this, like, real Renaissance-era feel to it with the illustrations. Pretty cool. Plus, uh, what other games do you actually get to play as a hot air balloon? Take that out. There we go. 180 for that guy. Now, I think the highest score that I've actually gotten in this might be... Oh, jeez, they are just biffing me there. <laughs> They're still doing it after my... My untimely death here. But if we check out the leaderboards, you can see that I'm actually at number 30. Uh, so those of you <laughs> who have seen this, you know. I'm actually tied with uh, this this guy here at 30-31. We both have tw uh, 1250. Uh, but if you move down, you can see that there's only been about 60 people who have actually played this game. So it's a pretty unknown game as of this moment. So that, that concludes pretty much what you're doing in the game as far as high score. So if you're playing this game just to get high score, it's great because this game has two sides of it. You can do that. But the other side of it is that this game actually offers almost like a, a quest uh, side of it too. Now because this game doesn't really explain anything going into it, there's no tutorial, um, there's no you know real explanation as to anything that's going on here. Here you see a close-up of... Uh, the guy in the, the hot air balloon, which is pretty cool. Um, you ha I kind of had to figure out a lot of this on my own. So, if you go into Chronicle, it, you actually have this book, right? And you'll, you'll get a story that you can read through here uh, about Prince Rupert, who's in the, the hot air balloon, right? And as you go through, you'll notice that the story starts to end because you have to do things to unlock different things in the game. So you'll see here that to go further past this part you have to pull the crate out of the water. So it gives you little clues as to what you need to do to unlock different parts of the book. 
uh, you have to meet the, and I'm sorry, I cannot speak French, so, <laughs> An Antonier. You have to pull the teapot out of the water, pull the flagon out of the water, visit the underwater temple, uh, pull the wardrobe out of the water. That one's just locked, doesn't even give you an option. That's probably for hitting a certain high score. Meet the steamboat, kill the squid, destroy the rooster vessel. See, there's just all kinds of different things that you need to do to unlock parts of the story. This will also help you to unlock the different achievements that are available in the game, too. But, you know, you're, you're probably thinking, like, wait a minute, you, you can go underwater in this? Yeah, with your hot air balloon, for some odd reason, you can actually visit things underwater. Now, of course, you have a certain amount of time you can spend underwater, as you can see, your... Uh, circle starts to close, and you don't... Oh, man, I just got biffed right there. Uh, but in addition to the water, you can actually... Ugh, these guys are really trying to take me out. You can actually go into space, too. And this might be a, a little secret for you guys out there who do go to play this game. You actually get an achievement for going high, high, high into space. Who knew you could take a hot air balloon into space? I don't know. I'll support it. I think it's cool. <laughs> I think it's fun. Woo! And then from this point, you can actually drop all the way back down to the water. Wait for it. Wait, oh, we're back into the sky. Here we go. And... Sploosh. Nice attention to detail there, too, showing that the water, or, or rather the uh, uh, fire actually goes out when it's, once it hits the water. So you can tell that there's a, a lot of attention to detail with this game. Uh, with the questing and everything like that. But there's a... With the exploring, this is the, the part of the game that I really got into. Uh, the high score stuff is pretty fun, but as you can tell, you know, I'm only in the 30, I hit 1250. I could probably beat that if I really dedicated myself to it. But I started finding myself thinking, like... Or, uh, you, you know, I, I started this and I was thinking, like, wow, this is just a high score game. I'm probably not going to play too much of this. I drowned underwater. Not paying attention. Um, but once I started finding out that there are achievements in this game, you can see here, if you look at the achievements, it says Rooster on Board and Goose on Board. And I was like, wait a minute, you could find creatures and put them on your, your water balloon? Huh. So what I did is I, I found out that you can restart your, um, your, your... Through the settings here, you can actually reset the game. You can delete all your unlocks and everything if you wanted to restart the game. So I figured I would do that for this playthrough. We're actually going to unlock one of the creatures so you can see what this is all about. So you use the, the achievements and the story to kind of... You can actually catch a fish there, too. See, I caught this fish. Not sure what I'm going to do with them, though. I'm sure it has something to do with one of the achievements in the, in the game. I'm not really sure, but... What we're going to do is we're going to unlock a crew member so you can get an idea how the questing works in this game. Because it's something that I was very surprised by, and it's something that I was having a lot of fun with. Okay, we were already here. I got trapped here. I believe the place we need to go to is where the temple is. And one of the chapters says that to unlock it, you need to find the underwater temple. And I still have not found that yet, but here is the squid. So we just, you saw the book show up there. While you're playing, you can hit Y on the controller. You can bring up the book, and you could scroll over to what unlocked with the squid. There we go. So suddenly the prince sighted a cruise steamboat on the verge of meeting certain doom. So there you, you actually unlocked a, a chapter with the squid. So you get the next chapter for killing the squid, which you can do by actually moving this boat and, you know, pelting the squid with shots like so. So there's a lot of different things you could do, but we're going to leave the squid for now just so we can go get a crew member here. Gonna go try to find the easiest one that I know of already, which is one that I unlocked just before I started this playthrough here. There's actually quite a long board here too, as you can see. I'm looking for this uh, this temple that's on the rocks here, we haven't gotten to it yet, and the the level does just keep repeating as you go. So if you get to the end of one side on the left, it just, you know, starts all over again. So you just keep going and going and going. Trying to find this temple. I was probably closer to the temple on the right and <laughs> going to the left. Probably taking the long way around over to it. But I'm not getting pelted by anything, which is surprising. Normally there's dudes buzzing all around me. 
Where is this temple at? Alright, so I just unlocked another thing. I'm not sure what I unlocked this time. There we go. Whatever that was, I unlocked that. It tells you about this burning uh, balloon here. I will say one of the minor annoyances that, about this game is you can't pause it. Uh, oh, there was achievement there. wonder what that was for. Let's take a look, shall we? Aeronaut. Fly over a good chunk of the world. I feel like I, I had to have done that already. There we go. Here's the temple I was talking about. So, but yeah, one of the uh, things that annoyed me, once you get underwater here, you use these bubbles to keep you afloat and alive. But I still have this fish on my hook. I wonder if I'll be able to pick this up with the fish. I guess we'll find out once we get to the bottom. So yeah, to make my point, one of the minor annoyances is you cannot pause. When you hit start, it actually takes you right back to the title screen. Which for me was a, a pretty big annoyance because, you know, if uh, my wife or somebody came in the room and was like, hey, you know, got a question for you, you know, can you do this for me real quick? I'd go to pause it and then I would lose all my progress, which was pretty annoying. Uh, so th if I had to suggest anything for fixing in this game, definitely with like a pause menu. I, I guess you could use the book like this as a pause menu. You just have to remember to hit it. But I don't know. I grew up in the age of like, hey, I hit start to pause. And <laughs> so I, it's a really hard habit to break when you've been doing it since you were a kid. Now, can I actually pick this up? Okay, I can't. All right. So what we're going to do is we'll just drown down here real quick. And we'll start with a fresh hook, and we will go down and get this crate. So, you get this crate, and you have to bring it up to the surface. And that is how you accomplish your quest. Stay alive here. Love the look of the jellyfish here. There was another area where I went under the water, and there was a gigantic stingray that was flying. Or, uh, yeah, flying, but... <laughs> Uh, swimming around right in front of my screen, which I thought was a great touch. I thought it looked really, really cool. So when I say attention to detail, they, they really put a lot of love and care into the, the art style of this game. It has such a unique look, this, this almost renaissance-looking illustration style. Love the way the water looks under here, too. All right, so i got to be quick about this. i got to grab the crate. There we go. So you grab it with your hook, like we did with the fish. And now we just have to stay alive and get back to the top. Grab that here. We're almost there. Almost got the crate up there. There we go. We have unlocked a piece of the book. Let's find out what it was. The rooster. Suddenly a rooster flew to the balloon and sat on the edge of the basket. He told the prince in a human voice that if he finds a thief who stole a star from the sky, he will get a hefty reward as the sultan himself announced. So you can tell that these stories in here are also giving you clues as to things you could do uh, in the game as well. He's talking about finding a star in the sky. So there must be a star in the sky somewhere that we could find. Pretty cool. Now, the, the coolest thing about this, though, is once you're done reading that, if we hit start and go back to the title screen, you can see the rooster is now actually in the balloon with us. <laughs> Which I thought was great. Uh, if we go to play this again, we need. Let's go back and find this squid real quick before we call this playthrough. There, it doesn't look like there's. There, there are quite a few quests to do in this game, but it looks like if you knew exactly how to do them all, then it might be a really quick unlock for you in a lot of ways. But there are a lot of things that I have not discovered in this game, and I feel like that's part of the fun of it too. So let's see if we can take out this squid really quick. I am hitting him. Let's see. There we go. Took out the squid. So now that we've taken out the squid, if we go back to the title screen again, you see that we now have a goose. A goose and a rooster have joined. And you can tell from the top right of the screen here, on the title screen, that I've only unlocked three of the eight crew members. So myself, a rooster, and a goose. There's five other uh, people or animals or whoever that I still have not even found yet. Which I, I think is awesome. So there is a little bit of a, you know, questing, replayability, lots of stuff to do in this game. 
we go into here, let's go back to our book. Yeah, you know, it adds an entry in here about the goose. Here we go. Atrocious animal, shouted the prince in anger, and sliced the beast into four pieces with his salvo. That's really funny. May God bless you, dear aeronaut, <laughs> says the goose. So the, it's great, too, because there's a little bit of humor in this as well. But for those of you who don't want to do questing, you also have the, the fallback of the... Uh, the fallback of the, the leaderboards and the high score uh, achievements and that kind of thing. Uh, there are achievements for reaching certain high scores, so there's a lot of depth to this little game. And I, I was actually quite shocked, because I, I was not expecting that going into this. Uh, let's go and see... Da, da, da. Tragedy of Prince Rupert. I want to get a price for you guys real quick. So it's eight ninety nine. So a game that's nine dollars, not even ten bucks. It's nine dollars to uh, to purchase on Steam. I gotta say, I, I feel like this is definitely worth the money because if you're into bullet hell shooters, but you're also into games that have like a little bit of a quest feature in them, you're into games like you know it really reminds me of a game like Bray. Oh, you can grab this barrel too, which I'm not even sure what you do with it. But if you're if you're into games, you know uh, the first. Uh, game that came to mind was Braid, where the the game on the surface is just a game, but then there's this whole, like, you know, end game or uh, questing mechanic to it that you wouldn't have even thought about because the game doesn't tell you much about it. Um, it's it's It was quite a surprise for me. I think it's very, very cool. And uh, I think it's definitely worth your time. I'm going to try taking this uh, barrel over to the temple and see if that's what I got to do with it. I've picked up these barrels a few times in the past while playing this, and I just have not figured out what I'm supposed to do with them. There's another ship. And of course we know the, the trek to the temple takes quite a while. Get our health back. Name of the game, stay alive. Stay alive, don't get hit. Those bigger ships take quite a few shots. Okay, we're still not finding where we need to go. But I, you know me, uh, for anybody who watches this channel regularly, I am all about exploration in this game, or uh, in any game. In games in general, I love to explore. So when a game has this hidden exploration feature, and not so much that it's hidden, but just that it doesn't tell you about it, I am super, super into that. I am, I'm all over it. While the uh, the actual gameplay, you know, uh, trying to get high scores and shoot planes down and that kind of thing, while fun, I've always been uh, more into exploration, so the fact that it has that side to it, I think, is quite grand. Alright, so where am I supposed to put this barrel at? I really don't even know. Oh no, no! Yeah, maybe I'll find out later. I don't know where I'm supposed to take this barrel to, but... Hey, that's part of the secret of the game. Figuring these things out, just trying things, right? Well, there you go, everybody. That is Tragedy of Prince Rupert. I'm going to keep questing here and keep trying to find things. And uh, I will see you all next time on GGRC. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to check out some of the other GGRC episodes. And if you're feeling a little retro, why not jump into the Quake Grave, where you can watch me play through a lot of different custom maps in Quake. Enjoy.